Hey friends, welcome back to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. I am your host, Heather. I've been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009, making my show 15 years old this year. It's growing up so fast. This channel is where I put all of my episodes from all of my shows, as well as TudorCon videos and extra content like this video right here. Today, we are talking about bizarre punishments of the Tudor era, from boiling cooks to brutal ends. So let's get right into it. Have you ever wondered how a simple pot of porridge could lead to one of the most shocking executions in Tudor England? Well, the Tudor period was a time when justice was served as harshly as the crimes committed, or sometimes even more harshly. In this video, we will delve into the grim and gruesome punishments of the 16th century, where even cooks weren't safe from the wrath of the law. Our story begins with Richard Roos, a cook whose fate was sealed in a pot of poisoned porridge. But Roos's story is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's explore some of the most bizarre and brutal punishments that characterize the Tudor justice system. In 1531, a scandal shook the household of the Bishop of Rochester. The bishop's cook, Richard Roos, found himself at the center of a deadly mystery. A pot of porridge intended for the bishop's table became a lethal weapon. Several people fell ill and two tragically lost their lives. Suspicion quickly fell upon Roos, who was accused of poisoning the porridge. In a period where culinary mishaps could lead to fatal consequences, Roos's alleged crime was seen not only as a breach of trust, but an act of malevolence that demanded severe retribution. The medieval and early modern period was a time when punishments were designed to be as spectacular as they were cruel. For Roos, this meant facing a punishment so rare and so horrifying, it still echoes through history. He was sentenced to be boiled alive. The execution of Richard Roos was a public spectacle, a gruesome warning to all who might dare to commit such heinous acts. It's said that a special law was enacted specifically for this method of execution highlighting the extraordinary nature of Roos's alleged crime. This chilling event serves as a stark reminder of the brutal ways that justice was administered in Tudor England. Of course, the law was not just a means to maintain order. It was a tool to instill fear and enforce conformity. The punishments meted out went beyond mere retribution, often serving as public spectacles of power and control. Let's explore some of the most unusual and brutal punishments that characterize this period. Maiming, the case of William Prynne. In 1634, the story of William Prynne, a Puritan pamphleteer, highlighted the dangers of opposing the established religious and political order. Prynne's writings, which criticized the Anglican Church and the monarchy, led him to a cruel fate. For his treasonous thoughts, Prynne was subjected to a barbaric form of punishment. He had his ears cropped. This act of maiming was not just a physical punishment, it was a symbolic act. By mutilating Prynne's body, the authorities sought to demonstrate the consequences of dissent, marking him permanently as a traitor to the church and the crown. The punishment of William Prynne serves as a stark reminder of the lengths to which Tudor authorities would go to suppress any form of challenge to their authority. Pressing to death, Margaret Clitheroe's martyrdom. Another harrowing story from this period is that of Margaret Clitheroe, a recusant Catholic in Elizabethan England. In 1586, Clitheroe was charged with harboring priests, a serious offense in a time of religious persecution. Refusing to enter a plea to protect her children and servants from being forced to testify, Clitheroe faced a gruesome punishment, pressing to death. This method, known as pene forte et dure, involved placing the accused under a board and gradually adding weights until the victim was crushed. Margaret Clitheroe's death was not just a judicial execution, it was a martyrdom, showcasing the extreme measures taken to enforce religious conformity during the Tudor period. Hanging, drawing, and quartering. An example of Guy Fawkes. The case of Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot of 1605 is perhaps one of the most infamous examples of Tudor punishment. Fox was caught in the act of attempting to blow up the Houses of Parliament and was sentenced to a gruesome death, which was the sentence given to anyone convicted of treason. This method of hanging, drawing, and quartering involved first hanging the convicted until near death, 
followed by disemboweling and finally dividing the body into four parts. This brutal method was reserved for the gravest crimes, treason. Fox's execution was a public spectacle designed to instill fear and serve as a warning to any would-be traitors. It was a punishment that epitomized the severity and cruelty of Tudor justice. The Scold Bridal, the case of Dorothy Valence. Not all unusual punishments of the Tudor era were reserved for high crimes like treason or heresy. Some were specifically targeted at women, often for lesser offenses. Take, for example, the case of Dorothy Valence in the late 16th century. Her crime? Gossiping and causing unrest. Her punishment? The scold's bridle. This iron muzzle was a particularly insidious form of public humiliation used to silence troublesome women. By forcing Dorothy Valence to wear the scold's bridle, the authorities were not just punishing an individual, they were sending a clear message about expected behavior and the place of women in Tudor society. The Tudor period was marked by a harsh and often brutal approach to law and order. Punishments like maiming, pressing, hanging, drawing, and quartering using the scold's bridle were not just about retribution, they were about control, enforcing conformity, and instilling fear. These stories of unusual and brutal punishments offer us a window into the Tudor mindset and the lengths to which they would go to maintain their vision of order and authority. It's crucial to understand the underlying philosophy that guided this harsh approach to justice. In Tudor England, the spectacle of punishment was as important as the punishment itself. Each method we've explored serves a specific purpose in the societal and political landscapes of the time. Maiming, as seen in the case of William Prynne, served as a visual and permanent reminder of the consequences of opposing authority. It was a personal and public mark of shame, a deterrent not just for the individual, but for the entire society. Pressing to death, the fate of Margaret Clitheroe was a method used to uphold the law while circumventing judicial process. By refusing to enter a plea, Clitheroe avoided a trial, but the punishment she faced was a dire warning to others about the absolute power of the state, even over life and death. The elaborate and brutal spectacle of hanging, drawing, and quartering, as endured by Guy Fawkes, was designed to be a public display of the ultimate price of treason. This method was not just about punishing the individual, it was about terrorizing the populace into submission and loyalty. Lastly, the scold's bridle used on women like Dorothy Valence was a tool to enforce social norms, specifically gender norms. It was a way to police women's speech and behavior, reinforcing a patriarchal society where women's voices were literally and figuratively restrained. These punishments reflect a view of justice that was as much about control and deterrence as it was about retribution. The Tudor legal system was a tool of state power, one that enforced conformity and obedience through fear and brutality. The stark contrast between Tudor and modern views on justice and punishment couldn't be more profound. Understanding these harsh realities of the past not only provides us with a glimpse into a very different world, but also highlights the evolution of our legal systems and societal values. Today, the principles of justice focus more on rehabilitation and fairness, seeking to balance the rights of the individual with the needs of society. The journey through the brutal punishments of the Tudor period serves as a reminder of how far we have come in our quest for a more humane and just society. So there we have it, my friends. If you have made it to the end of this video, I sure would appreciate a press of that like button. It helps to feed the algorithm and reach more people. And I hope I earned your subscription to my channel where I put out videos like this on the regular. Thank you so much for listening. I know there are so many choices on YouTube and you chose to spend the last 10 minutes or so with me. I don't take that for granted and I hope I made it worth your while. All right, my friends. I will be back soon. Don't forget to drink your water. Bye-bye. <laughs>